Hello. This is my voice. Get used to it. It's no secret that BMNG has a ton of car configurations. You can especially tell by sorting vehicles by each individual config in the car select, of which you'll find 752 configs that are divided across the 34 cars. Now, I have to admit, some of them are better than others. So I wondered, what is the best config for every car? And, well, here we are. Of course, keep in mind that this is all just my dumb opinion. Nothing in this video is objective. If you want, sound off in the comments what your opinions are, and, well, let's get on with it. Pizza time. The little Fiat 600-esque automobile is a neat little thing. Added in update 0.15, it came with only 13 configs, which I guess is fair considering how small it is. They were divided among an early and late model build, and had variants ranging from base pedestrian builds to off-roaders. I'll be honest, I wasn't too blown away from the selection. The regular variants were fine to just drive around in, and the Tricolori config looks pretty cool. However, most of them just didn't do that much special for me. So the Rally and Baja configs are what I used the best. In general, though, I just didn't use a Piccolina all that much. And then update 0.27 happened. Oh yeah, I love this thing. Three more buggy configs were added to the game in 0.27, and these things are just a joy to drive while also looking amazing. These new bona fide Baja buggies, I think, breathed some new life into the Piccolina and gave it a lot more possibilities with customization and whatnot. It even came with a completely new simulation system of the shock absorbers, which I'm not even going to try to explain. I'll link the update page in the description. But of the three, which one do I like the most? The Spec Class 5 looks the closest to the original car, but also doesn't pack that much power behind it. The Baja Extreme comes with its own paint job and has incendiary speed, but is also kind of impossible to drive. As such, the Baja Unlimited Class 5 strikes a nice balance to me. It looks gorgeous and still has a good amount of power, enough for me to fly through Johnson Valley. This thing is a joyride and the BMG devs did quite the job with it. Thanks guys. For honorable mentions, well, I already mentioned them. The other buggies are also great, as much as I struggle to use the Baja Extreme. The Rally and Baja configs are also nice to drive if the ground isn't as bumpy, and of course the Tricolore is probably the most Italian car in the game. Another thing that came with update 0.27 is the Stambeco the big Italian Mafia van which I initially thought was Russian, and BMG's resident brick. It's got 20 varied configs, a lot of which change the shape and size of the body and even the number of wheels it has. It's all got a ton of different uses and the Stembeco is pretty big on customization. I love this thing as well, but above all, the 525F2 support vehicle is my favorite. Now, I easily could have chosen the C2 Rally being the most powerful of the bunch, but the support vehicle is just one big stampede of rhinos conglomerated into one massive machine. It's got the largest body option, it's encased in a huge roll cage, still faster than a lot of them. This creates the best Stembeco config in the game. I love it. The Stembeco's got a lot of good configs though, including the previously mentioned C2 Rally, which is a lot more nimble than it should be and also maybe the best looking of the bunch. The 525 FP2 fire truck is another tank, and its fire rescue paint job looks better than I expected it to. Finally, the 505 F Campo borders on Uncanny as it tries to be a more town-friendly van sold to the general public, while still looking like a wall. The Bruckle Bastion, introduced in update 0.24.1, is the game's first modern American muscle car. It's got 20 configs, ranging from unassuming sedan to completely off the walls and drivable. I like the selection. It could be a little more varied, but I think it still offers a ton for players to screw around with. The more powerful configs are some of the fastest cars in the game, and its modern styling is welcome in a game where there isn't too much of it. For me, though, 
well, while the Bastion has a ton of fast, exciting variants that you can let loose on the racetrack, my favorite config is a little more grounded. The Lux 5.7 all-wheel drive is the fastest luxury Bastion available, and I think it has just the right amount of power for me to be able to control on the vast majority of BMG's roads. Being a luxury model, it's got some of the best looks the car has to offer, so I can ride around BMMP in style. Add 10 frames per second, before I get sent to oblivion by a Jato powered bus. I like this config so much, in fact, that it's my default car, because, well, I can use it in so many areas. But yeah, for a car that can be oh so powerful, I chose a middle ground, and I'm cool with it. That doesn't mean they can't be honorable mentions, though, because they are. The Red Tail styling, I think, is pretty good. They tried to make it look as gritty and menacing as possible, and I think it fits pretty well. I'd wanted a demon in the game prior to its addition, and this fits it pretty well, I'd say. There's also the off-road variant, which is very quick on dirt, despite his description not being so sure of it. I like the bash bars as well. Bruckle Legrand is the quintessential average boxy American sedan from the mid-80s. Its base models perform just about as well as you'd expect them to. However, for such an unassuming car, it's got a lot of substance behind it. It's got 34 configs, tied with the Blue Buck for 6th most configs of any car in BMNG. As such, while I don't normally care for these sorts of cars, I think the Legrand is pretty good. It's got station wagon body, facelift models, body kits, and more. Packs a lot of stuff. My favorite of a lot is the SE campaign, described by the game as being little produced, which is quite a shame, Ruckle should have made more. There's not a lot of station wagons in the game, so I try to take advantage of the Grand's configs because of it. And the campaign gives it an all-terrain setup with a bigger engine paired with facelift features. It's not the fastest thing out there, but it's decently capable all around, and sometimes that's just enough for me. Pretty good. When it comes to honorable mentions, the rally config comes to mind. It's not too powerful, so I'm generally able to drive it on dirt pretty well. It's even kind of relaxing. And the Fire Chief is like an SE campaign on steroids. The bull bar, the new lights, and all the other accessories are pretty nice. Okay, okay, we're here. It's it's time for the Moonhawk. Oh boy. Well, I've talked about this thing in the past, specifically about how outdated it was. Yeah. I mean, I almost never use this thing. It's got 19 configs, but none of which are really all that interesting to me. Except, well, the donk. It's probably not an original opinion, but it's easily the most unique part of it, and one of the only things that sets it apart from other cars. It's the only donk car in the game, and I like BMG including all sorts of different vehicles, no matter how outlandish. It's very silly, but unforgettable which immediately lifts it over pretty much every other config the Moonhawk has. Uh, okay, 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 sorry guys, sorry, I, I've been too harsh towards this car. Uh, I've just been clamoring for a remaster ever since I saw that disaster of an engine. Believe it or not, I actually do have nice stuff to say about its honorable mentions. The drag car, for example, is a menace. It's got some nice paint, and it's built on the older model, which I think looks a little better. And for a car that I never use, this is probably my favorite old drag car in the game. And the track config is pretty powerful, but... Oh. Okay then. Uh... Another outdated car I never use. Fantastic. Right, so the uh, Burnside Special is even thinner at configs, only 8 of them were added. Not terrible though, the selection is just very thin. Of the bunch, the Lead Sled is the most unique and brings the Burnside some more customization options in general. I'm pretty terrible at drifting, so I'm not even good at using this thing, but it's pretty cool, I guess. 
It's got a nice swagger to it, and the styling is pure 50s, including the uh, eyelids, light lids, whatever they're called, I don't know. Oh wow, it really is eyelid. But yeah, it's nice. I don't really care about the other configs all that much, but the drag car can do some nice semi-wheelies, and the police car is basically just the sheriff from Cars. We've finally reached a car that's hardly aged at all since its introduction into the game. Or is it a platform? Whatever, I'll cover both of them. The FCV platform, including the Togrek and the Vivas, was added in update 0.19 and has been perhaps the most popular vehicle addition in years. With its unique modern styling, high customization, and huge variety of configs, which we'll be focusing on. In total, there's 43 total FCV configs. 15 belonging to the Tograk and 28 belonging to the Vivas. Starting with the crossover with the really ugly front fascia, well, the configs don't actually do too much for me. They're luxurious, but I don't use them very often, especially since the Tograk isn't actually that good at off-roading. However, the amateur rally is a pretty nice option. It's on the slower end of rally cars, which is kind of preferable really. It's pretty easy to control, and I like using it when I want to go on gravel without needing to wrestle a bear like the Vivas Rally. Actually, speaking of the Vivas, that's actually my favorite config. The Gravel Rally is the fastest of its kind in the game and is a complete monster. I know I said it can be pretty difficult to handle, but when you actually do, it's oh so satisfying to get some good runs in with it. To me, this car is the poster child to the more serious side of BMG that involves more actual driving than crashing, and it's a shining example of what this game is capable of past the surface. Also helps that it's featured in what might be the most viewed BMG speedrunning video. Blasting a Rally Vivas through the River Rally course is one of my favorite experiences in the game, and it's thanks to this little brilliant machine. Not gonna lie, this might be my favorite config in the game. Thanks, devs. Okay, okay, enough gushing. Here's some actual honorable mentions. The Asphalt Rally config is everything I said, but on actual roads. The Hill Climb Vivas is also completely insane, and the Vivas E is a nice little electric car that doesn't go too fast or too slow and gives a pretty enjoyable driving experience. Without looking like an Eldritch Abomination. Let's move on to a classic now. The Bowley Day, or the Bowlie, and I'll just call it the Bowley Day, has been in BMG for almost a decade, being added before the first official release of 0.3. Remember when the car was borderline undrivable? Good times. You got a much needed remaster in 0.24.1, which left it standing at 20 configs. And they're pretty good ones. There's a lot of really powerful and good looking variants, and my favorite of the bunch is the 320 GTT Corsa Targa. This car just looks stunning. Orange and black is a sweet color combination in my opinion, and the body kit works pretty well. Plus, the Targa top. It's a dream ride. I'm also not very good at driving this, as I am with pretty much every other bolide. Bully day. Dang it. But I still like taking it for a spin around the maps if I'm not looking for peak performance. And I meant spin literally as well. But never mind that. This car's sweet. For honorable mentions, I mean, I could put pretty much all of them. The Bully Day has maybe my favorite selection of configs in the game. Out of the bunch though, I quite like the 350 Targa model, as it's something that I can actually kinda drive, and the simple styling still works well. The top speed config serves one purpose, but serves it very well. Going fast is nice. And while I would be able to drive the 320 GTR Group 5 model if my life depended on it, I could look at it all day. Okay, enough of that, let's move on. Yep, 
Y'all wanted this for a long time. BMG's first modern supercar is an outstanding piece of art that I also couldn't drive if my life depended on it. Muya said that it looked better than a lot of actual cars today, and I'd have to agree. The Chantilla only has 16 configs, but they're a lot more varied than I expected them to be. If I'm being honest, my assumption was that they'd mostly serve the same purpose as race fast, but thankfully it's a lot more fun. The biggest spectacle, and my favorite of them all, is this thing. Just look at it, it's a Mad Max mobile. This car, in my opinion, might be one of the best looking in the game. There's really nothing quite like it. It's especially helped by the gritty paint job, which complements it really well and makes it look all the more tough. Aside from the looks, the engine sounds ferocious and is a joyride on gravel roads. Following the Chantilla's release, I think this was the only car I used for a solid week. If you couldn't tell already, this is also a contender for my favorite config in the entire game. So let's move on before I ramble on for too long. The Chantilla is another car where I could probably put all of his configs in honorable mentions, but I have to cut it down again. The custom config is another joyride, this time on actual paved roads, and I like the selection of parts and paint the devs gave it. The Velocita, I hope I pronounced that right, is also crazy fast and it looks even better. And then there's... <laughs> there's this thing. The Dark Owl movie car, aka the Batmobile. It's not the best in terms of driving, but just look at it, it's insane. Another car that's in a league of its own in terms of looks. Next up, we have the end of the video. Yeah. We're done with a little over of the quarter of the car roster, so expect about as much next time. Sorry for gushing a little too much about the later cars, but you wanted my opinion, you got my opinion. They were really cool. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, sorry for the way between this video and the last. I got pretty busy and also put in a lot more effort for this. The new editing software is doing wonders, so expect more like this in the future. If you want, press the like button and maybe even subscribe. I'm aiming for 1,000 subs by the end of the year, and it'd be wholly appreciated. I don't really have anything left to say, so I'll just sign off for today. Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen.